Welcome to the Art Talks at the Art Base. My name is Amy Beasley. I am a journalist and member of the Art Base board. And today we are starting a series of conversations with both mentors and mentees of the Claudette Carter Art Mentorship. The gallery show will be up at the Art Base beginning April 23rd and ending on May 21st of 2021. And the hours here in the gallery are from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. So if you have a chance, come on down and see this incredible work from uh, local young artists. Um, this program has been around for a few years. Um, it requires a pretty rigorous application process. And in the end, four young artists are chosen to work over a series of about a month or two months with um, a local artist. And then they have their work shown at a professional gallery show of about a month. So we are excited today to start off this conversation with two fantastic artists and uh, a mentor and mentee. Um, our student is Finn Johnson. He's a sophomore at Aspen High School. And his mentor is Paul Wozniki, who is an Aspen-based art consultant and co-founder um, co or co-owner, I'm sorry, of Big Woz Marketing in Aspen, Colorado. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about um, who you are and why you were interested in this program to begin with. So Finn, why apply to this program and how were you introduced to um, the mentorship here at the Art Base? Um, yeah, so I've always had an interest in arts. Um, I've been drawing um, for as long as I could remember and my passion for making art and learning about art has since just become a bigger part of my life. Um, and I've tried to um, come a part of like any opportunities that I find here in the Valley that has to do with arts. Um, I'm on the Aspen Art Museum Team Council and I do some programs that they host and um, I was scrolling through Instagram one day and I saw the, that the application was open for the mentorship and I knew I had to apply just because um, I was really interested in it. And another really interesting thing about it that I was like excited about was um, the opportunity to work closely with someone. Um, obviously I've had art teachers in the past, but it's never been that um, personal. And so I really wanted that close um, and personal instruction that kind of lose when, it, when there's like a big classroom. So yeah, that was a big part of it. That's great. And Paul, how were you um, first kind of approached for this and get involved with this program? Um, I, I've, been, I've been attending art-based functions for the last eight or so years. And uh, I've been on their exhibition committee for three or four of those years. Um, so I'm already on their list of people they know in the community. And uh, yeah, they approached me when, when they were looking for somebody else to mentor. And you're, um, have you ever worked with teenagers or young students before? Not at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell me about your first meeting and what that conversation was like when you were talking about what you wanted to present here in the gallery. Um, yeah, I mean, the first meeting was all just about brainstorming and we didn't really have any idea of what I wanted to do for my project. I think originally I was thinking of doing um, some project, project that involved clothing and painting on clothes. And I mean, obviously it's shifted into something completely different. So yeah, there was a lot of different ideas floating around and then we eventually landed on just painting my bedroom door, so yeah. And Paul, was this first meeting over Zoom or have you been meeting in person at all? This is the first time we've met in person. You're kidding. <laughs> yeah. You're kidding. Yeah, this yeah. has been a pandemic year for anyone that's watching this in 40, 41. Um, we're just getting coming out of the, the other side of COVID. So um, this has been more of an idea collaboration maybe than hands-on work. Is that an Definitely. accurate description? Yeah, absolutely. Great. So when you, um, did you ask to see any of Finn's past work or what was your kind of initial reaction to his, his uh, yeah he showed me a lot of his work he, he's he's really well organized a lot of it was already digitized and so he showed me uh, a whole series of, of portraits like this and then this 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 cutout type work um, yeah it was already strong and established yeah so have you been following certain artists over the years or can you um, direct yourself towards any influence or is this from Finn's brain <laughs> solely. Um, yeah, so as far as 
the characters go, I draw some pretty big inspiration from Murakami and Nara and just I, I really connect with their portraits and characters. So um, I really like that kind of super flat and simple vibe that they portray so effectively. And so that's a big part of it. And then um, I've also always had an interest in street art and graffiti and that movement. So artists like Shepard Ferry and Basquiat um, definitely followed their work pretty closely, so. That's great. Um, so how did you get, why don't we walk through the piece a little bit and tell me a little bit about um, after you consulted together and decided on this approach, what, first of all, is that your actual bedroom door? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to your parents for letting you do that. Um, talk to me about how this came to be. Um, yeah, I mean, it started off blank and I actually started painting it before I got accepted to the mentorship program, like a few months before, and I just put like a few characters up on it. Um, and then at the very beginning, as you can see in like the top left corner and down there, there's um, some paper Hello My Name Is stickers. And uh, at one point, uh, those stickers were covering like two thirds of the door. Um, and I decided to rip them all off and then start over and paint some characters that are under the, the portrait. Um, so you can't see them that well, but they were full in color. Um, so a lot of the process was kind of just like painting and then ripping that down and painting over stuff. And it was, so it was very messy and it was kind of, I, it wasn't that planned out. I kind of had like my ideas went on the door as they came and then, you know, it eventually became a fleshed out piece, but oh yeah, it was an interesting process. So tell me about the main portrait. Who is she and um, why does she have such strong presence in the piece? Um, uh, yeah, so the main portrait is of uh, um, Nurse Ratchet from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest the movie. And I was drawn to, uh, I was looking at images on Google and I was drawn to this photo of her just because of how menacing it was and I really like um, kind of the disturbing nature um, of that movie and I thought it um, meshed well with the pandemic and like what I was going through and um, while painting the door so um, that's why I chose to paint her. So is the entire door, we have some um, stickers, so some paper, some paint and is there any other medium that's uh, used here? You use a marker or? Uh, I mean, a lot of the, the characters are done with both like brushed on acrylic as well as acrylic paint marker. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And tell me about the, the um, kind of attraction to the teeth. I think the teeth are so interesting here. Um, do you have any, was there any kind of inspiration behind that or it's just something that you found interesting? Um, I, mean, I haven't really thought about it that much, but usually when I draw these characters, I start out with the mouth. So I think they're more detailed or that's a focal point just because it's the first thing I'm putting down on the page as I'm drawing them. So Paul, as his mentor, um, and you're seeing this kind of come to life, can you walk us through just some of your thoughts and some of the direction that you gave him as he was producing the work? The direction wasn't so much, I don't know, direction. It, it was just, I would ask him why he made the decisions he did, um, or to maybe think about space as he was, you know, building on the piece. And uh, the next week we'd meet again, and he would have those questions either completely resolved or two steps ahead of me. That's great, yeah. Finn. What do you think that you learned during the process, just either about your own work or about working with a mentor? Um, well, a big part of it was um, kind of letting loose and straying away from plans. I, I know like going into the project, I was making mock-ups on Photoshop and it was this very rigid thing. And it was like, I was constructing an equation to make this piece. And after like the first month that completely went away and I'm thankful for it because it kind of let me be more expressive with my work. Um, so really it has uh, been, a, been a change in just how I work. Cause usually I'm kind of a control freak when it comes to painting. Um, 
another really new thing that was fun to learn and work with was just the sheer scale of the door. And I haven't really done any paintings to that scale. So it was, uh, a big challenge was figuring out the composition and making it all a cohesive presentation in the end. So uh, that was definitely something I was focus focusing a lot on. That's great. And Paul, were you surprised at all at the end result? Or is this, have you, were you expecting something um, kind of so powerful? No, you know, there were, there were a few additions to the piece that were done recently. And it, Such as? Can you point it out to me? Um, the, the main portrait was added. When did you finish that? Uh, on Monday, yeah. right before dropping yeah. it off. So. Yeah, so that, I mean, that you know, really transformed the piece. But it had been in, in some early sketches. And so mm -hmm. I think initially it was going to be considerably smaller and, and up in the corner. And what is the, um, the kind of tag writing beneath it? Because if you look closely at the paint, you can see that you've um, made marks beneath it. Uh, yeah, so both uh, the writing um, below the portrait and then also on the stickers, it's, uh, it says Modak, which is kind of my alias. Um, like I said, I've been interested in street art and the graffiti scene and back in middle school, some of my friends, we would like all give each other um, tag names. So uh, I became Modak, I guess, and it just um, stayed with me since. So um, I really like just tagging it over and over and over just to kind of make a dynamic background. But also it's, you know, it's basically me signing my name and that's my mark on the piece. Yeah, and I like what you said before about kind of your reflection of how you felt during this time. I know that your school has been kind of on and off this whole year, and there's been a lot of home time. Um, so the use of the door, I think, is really interesting, but also this, this juxtaposition of these really um, interesting, almost fun characters on the bottom um, compared to Nurse Ratchet on the top, who is a, a menacing figure in literature and film. Um, what do you want people to take away from the piece? Um, as they're looking at it or thinking about it? Um, well, the big thing for me is that um, when they view the work, I really just want them to visualize me, the artist, spending hours on end just painting the door locked inside my room because a big part of the, the piece is the process alone and uh, what came out of that for me. Um, so much has shifted uh, of my life indoors and inside my room behind this door. And so I really like the inherent symbolism that came with painting a door, like the very object that's keeping me inside. Um, you know, I'm doing school inside, I'm riding my bike on a stationary trainer inside, I'm doing meetings with my therapist, everything has just shift indoors. Um, and, you know, painting this door, uh, it's really become uh, an escape from reality, you know, deadlines and school, none of that matters when I'm painting the door. It's just me immersed in the process. So I really just want the viewer to think about that and, you know, me working on the door. That's great. Paul, in terms of this work being representative of a larger movement of kind of post-pandemic art, how do you see this falling in? Is this something that you could see, um, you know, being a, a part of a larger story? of the art that's been produced over these last 12 to 18 months? Yeah, I mean, everything's part of a timeline, you know, and the pandemic certainly is. And so I'm, I'm a little surprised when I see, you know, recent pieces by artists that don't even discuss the pandemic. You know, it's like, oh, that's it's impacted, you know, your work certainly. I'm surprised it's not represented. So yeah, relevant topic. Um, I hope to see more art reflecting it. Yeah. So Finn, is this something down the road, like I know you're only a, a sophomore now, but um, as you kind of move forward and grow up a little bit more, is this something that you plan to pursue or is this something that you'll use as a creative expression in addition to um, whatever else you decide to pursue in, in the college years? Or... Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely keep pursuing art um, throughout high school and I'm not really sure what my relationship with the art will be proceeding then, but um, I've definitely thought about going to art school and you know, maybe pursuing a career in arts, and that's also why I wanna pursue all these different opportunities just in the Valley. 
um, so I can learn more about art and just become a better artist. So, yeah. That's great. Well, thank you both so much for talking about this incredible piece. It's really evocative and um, fun and thoughtful, and I really appreciate you both taking the time to speak with us. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you.